Welcome to the Citadel. My name is Joel Duggan, and this is a survival multiplayer server where I hang out with my friends and I do geeky stuff in Minecraft. If you were here on the stream last time, then you saw me work on this, which is the inn on a bridge, and we finally finished the underside of it. And I went back and I did a little bit extra work after the stream, but at the end of the day, we ended up with this nice solid support structure happening underneath this bridge now. This inn does not feel like it's going to collapse the bridge anymore. We've got a little dock and a boat and even a little footbridge. And we're going to swoop down there and take a closer look in a minute. But this was the vantage point that we had last stream. And we were kind of working on all of this down here. But if we want to jump down, I can show you. I don't normally do interiors. It's not really my thing. I'm not the greatest at it. Um, but we've got this little, I added this little footbridge. Uh, my note block texture uh, in this pack are uh, crates. Uh, these are from Jersey Boy. I, I borrowed with permission. And uh, so we've got that. We've got a little inside here. There's not much going on. There's a bed and a little table. But I, I wanted to do something in here so it wasn't completely just an empty box. I thought it would kind of kind of look cool. And there's even a path. Now the path that I did, this is uh, this is new, and this took forever. I don't know if anybody watching does many one wide paths or one and two wide paths. And to get them to look not like straight lines is really difficult. And to get them textured and, and have it look like something that's relatively tr well trodden without it all being one color is really difficult. So I'm pretty happy with the way that this came out and it kind of pops you out right up here. It's pretty subtle, but it's a nice little way to get down there. And there's even a little bit of a hint at the bottom to go over here and maybe explore the cave, which I think Things look looks really good too. Uh, this took a lot longer than I thought. I spent probably almost as long on this as I did on the other side of the bridge. <laughs> this kind of stuff is just, it's so noodly. Like there's really, there's really no way about it. You just have to kind of go in, change some stuff, back up, go in, change some stuff, back up again. But what I wanted to have it, I didn't want it to be a straight line, right? Like I wanted to have this kind of arc to it. And I think it works. Uh, and then if you go over here, you can barely see it, which is kind of the point, or at least I, I wanted it to be something that wasn't super visible from over here. So when you're looking at the bridge, there's enough green over here that it's a really low profile. You can't really see it. Um, you can at the bottom, of course, but that's about it. Jumpy21, hello. Welcome, welcome. All kinds of folks piling into the chat. This is great. So this is what we did last time. The question is, what are we going to do this time? So I have a little bit of a story. I was down here and I was working on the river and I cut the edges of the river. I made it all nice and smooth. I put in some seagrass, some gravel and coarse dirt. And there was a little bit of sand over here. And as I was doing this, I kept on hearing zombies and there was more zombies and more zombies and yet more zombies. And then I thought, okay, this is getting annoying. I'm going to go find that cave and I'm going to kill these these zombies. So I found the cave and it turns out that it wasn't just a cave. We actually have a zombie spawner here right in the meadows. And it is not that far below sea level. It's only about 13 blocks down. So this is what we're going to work on today. We are going to turn this little zombie spawner into a meat market because we've got some villagers that we want to trade rotten flesh with for emeralds and uh, i think it's going to be really fun uh, i don't know what it is about clearing out uh, spawners but i find it very satisfying they're simple little technical projects they're a lot of fun to do so uh, so that's what we're going to work on right now and the first thing we need to do is we're going to make sure that this is all lit up really really well it should be it should be okay with the, the torches and stuff currently on these walls but I need to make I mean need to make a note of these coordinates because the measurements for this thing are going to be important for later. So this is what is this? This is we're on 770 for the Z, and we are on negative 295 for the X. And we're standing on 50. Cool. Okay. So the first thing I want to do, 
is I want to find out where this pops out on the surface. And to do that, I think I don't want to come down on top of it just in case something bad happens. So what I'm going to do for now is I'm just going to pop. Let's use, I was hoping I was going to have some red from some um, pink glass or something, but I don't have any. Uh, let's just use red glass. So there is the middle. So when we come down and we hit that red glass, we know we're in the right spot. Oh, thanks, Cosmic Dancer. I, I like that cave entrance as well. That was something that um, that didn't take very long. I don't know if I have this music disc. We don't necessarily need all this stuff, but we might as well just chop it up, get it out of the way. So I need to go find the top side coordinates for uh, for that X and Z. And I'm hoping it's going to be somewhere like right around here-ish and not like under the river. But we shall see. Because we want to have some sort of house or, or surface build that you can come and AFK and have some zombies. And I have never been in this little birch forest, which is sad considering how long we've been playing on the server. Uh, so I need to find, what did I say it was? 295. It's going to be back this way. 770. No, 770 is here. And then 295. Oh, it is going to be out in the, I think it is going to be out in the middle of the, of the river. That's why I put that glass there. Oh, maybe not. Just on the edge. 295 and 770. Right here. Two ninety five seven seventy. So it is it is in the water. And that's a little bit annoying. Uh what's the best way to do this? That. So it's real subtle. We won't be able to see it, but at least now as we're building the farm, we'll be able to sort out where that is at a later time. Because I need to figure out which way I want to send the zombies. And it looks like I want to send the zombies uh, east by default. Because there's not going to be a lot of room to bring them up on either side. So it's good that we did that. So we can see there's our glass block right there. So that's the center. That's the spawner. And so we're probably going to send everybody east. And they're going to probably come up right here. The only trick is that the uh, the spot that you stand has got to be close enough to the spawner to activate it. And I believe it's only 14 blocks from the top of the spawner. So it has to be 64. So you're gonna have to stand down there at like sea level. So that's not ideal. Uh, but there's nothing we can do about that. We knew that was gonna happen. So maybe we build something into the hill here. Maybe there's a, a, a shack that we can build build into the hill. But uh, one of the things that I, I like about spawners is just how simple they are uh, to make. So one of the things I'm going to do is uh, I have to adjust my previous spawner design uh, to drop them out of the, what do they call it? It's called the evacuation area. What am I, where, what's going on here? I was in swim mode. Elytra and swimming are still really, really weird. So I guess the thing to do is going to be, we need a, a, an easy way to get in and out of here. And we need access to the zombies. Which way is east? East is this way. So we should probably build some sort of ladder around, well, we'll say maybe here-ish. We'll call this the entrance for now. And we can sort that out later. So 284, 762. Oh, this is confusing. As you can see, I do not want to be coming in and out of this haphazard watery tunnel. 
284, did I say 284? I said 284 and 762, right? 766, 62, 24, 762. Yeah. I know I'm digging straight down, but that's okay. It's all right. Beauty. So this will be a much better way for us to get in and out and it'll allow us to close off that terrible water stream uh, that's coming in here and is gonna be in the way anyway. So I need to find some stone. Really, we can use anything. We'll go, let's go close this off now. We're gonna need some more stuff here. So I thought because this thing is gonna be a meat grinder that we could make the whole thing granite on the inside and I am going to have to get some redstone out because I want to wire up some redstone lamps that we can use to turn this on and off. We need four and we can probably also use polished uh, granite behind those to turn them on. The way that these things work is that you want to have a too high space on top of the spawner. We can do that like that and like that and then you're going to have your ceiling level so this is all going to be granite like this and having two blocks on top of the spawner just means that no mob will spawn directly on top of it and stand there because we don't we don't want that to happen we want to try to get as much uh, rotten flesh and zombie guts as we can. So we've got almost a whole ceiling in. And we're going to go a little bit farther. So the way that um, these are usually set up smaller and then monsters will, will spawn outside of the area. But what you can do is actually just count out uh, a number of blocks to make this a, a, a square. It makes it an easier way to um, to capture all of the mobs and then not have to worry about the stuff outside. So usually it's nine wide. Uh, I think it's like eight by nine or eight by eight, but nine by nine, it's like one extra block to um, to dig out, but it just means that you're gonna get everything. So I've got one, two, three, four uh, on this side, and then one, two, three, four on that side. And these little uh, blocks of granite that I had put in here before the stream are where the lights go. So one, two, three, four, and then you put in your light. And you want to make sure that your light is even with the spawner because that is what's going to light it up and keep it from spawning should we ever want to turn it off. One, two, three, four. And I think this is the last one. Two, three, four. Perfect. So now we know that we have to dig out this whole area like this all the way into the corner. Now I'm not going to do this uh, just plain uh, plain Jane. I'm going to go get a beacon. Uh, and there's a number of beacons that we have. I might even have one. Do I have one in my... don't know if I have one in here. I might. Do I have a traveling beacon? Survey says I do not. Okay. That's right. We can grab one from the meadows. Not, not a big deal. The pain in the butt is just going to be building the the silly pyramid that it needs all the way around it. So that's the size of the room that we got to clear out and we have to go down. Let me see here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, I think minimum. I'm adding some distance to it uh, because I feel like the water mechanics in 1.13 will keep the heads of the mob inside the evacuation area and we don't want that at all. Uh, but let's go get a beacon because that's going to make our lives a lot easier. <laughs> hey, you know, if you, you got to do things right, right? If you if you want to dig out this hole, you don't want to watch me dig out this hole, even with haste two on my pickaxe. It's still a big enough hole that uh, that it would take a long time. We are going to still save time by coming to get this beacon. Two stacks and thirty six. Thank you very much, Mister Fixit. Appreciate it. Uh, two stacks. I don't need. What do I not? I don't need string, and I don't need gunpowder or hay or flesh. So two stacks. Let's just grab three stacks. 
And we'll call that a day. I think what I want to do is turn these lights on first because I think that will give us um, some more flexibility as we're digging this out. We can just do this. What was I thinking? We'll just do this. We'll just leave, because we want it on the whole time. Right? I'm not gonna be turning it off while we're in here. Silly thinking. It's uh, It's been a long week. <laughs> been very busy this week. <laughs> My brain is not firing at all cylinders. There. So now we can do things like remove these torches and everything will be fine because they extend enough of a light level to the spawner to keep it from doing anything anything bad. And now we can ditch the redstone and lay out the walls of the room. I was debating doing this uh, as polished uh, as polished granite, but I think we're just gonna go straight granite. I think that could be fine. And yes. We will have to do, we will have to put some lights back here though. It's the only thing. So we'll have to put some torches back here for now. That will end up being cleared out because I'm gonna to wanna to, uh, be around the back uh, to do the actual wiring at the end. But for now, oh, went too far. putting Swiss cheese holes and everything. <laughs> Something I'm really excited about uh, and that I've noticed uh, more when I mine is that I really like the new andesite texture and I don't tend to have a lot of it on hand because previously it wasn't great. And now that they've got that new texture, uh, I'm finding that I need to actually go mine and look for andesite, which I think is great. It's, it's a nice change from the norm. So I get claustrophobic when I'm behind things that are only two blocks tall. So let's just, since we've got the haste going. We'll just clear this out. Give ourselves a nice clear path around everything. Like that. Excellent. Oh, this is the wrong spot. We'll leave ourselves an opening right here. Get in and out. And we'll probably build them some stairs as we go. So I know right now it looks like a lot of granite, but but think meat, think meat, think zombie meat, and your brain you will you will start to think of granite in a completely different light. <laughs> I thought about using netherrack, but netherrack is just it's everywhere <laughs> in the nether, and you see it so much, but you don't see big granite rooms very often. So that's why I'm switching I'm using granite. So that is going to be the inside dimension uh, for the X and the Z. Uh, this is going to remain two, but then we have to go down quite a bit. And so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave myself. This is going to end up being like a staircase on this side. Should go a lot faster once we clear out all of this cobble because uh, obviously even with haste two, cobble and mossy cobble do not mine all that fast. So we're just going to go through this as quickly as we can. Be nice to have some extra mossy cobble and not have to craft it. Yeah, it's not baked beans anymore. That's an excellent uh, spawn chunks reference. I've got to be careful, actually. I don't. I would be really upset after all this work, even just the work I've done so far, if I blew up that spawner. So I think what we'll do, just to be safe, is let's. What's something that will not insta mine? Probably wood. Let's just do that. I never use jungle wood for anything. Like if I do this, the spawner is going to be dark. Does that mean it's going to start spawning stuff? Oh, experiment. I've never done that before. <laughs> I know it works with blaze spawners, but that's that's a different different case. Jungle looks best in the Mesa. Ah, that's a really good call. Never thought about that. 
All right, now we get to the fun part. This will not take very long at all. Not that I need the stone. We've got more than enough for all the big digs that we've done here on the server. I'm curious, when people dig big holes like this, do you, um, do you, do you go la layer by layer? Do you dig straight down? you know, to the bottom and then come back up. Like what's your usual process? I tend to, to like to know where I'm going. So I tend to make like a, a stone stair to get me part of the way down. And I do find that mining out two layers at a time, like a two by two, I find that this is the fastest way to go. 